What's going on guys? This is Chris from Terrestrial Imaging here with part three of our Yellow Scan Mapper Plus video series. In this video, we're gonna be going over post-processing the data that we collected when flying with our Mapper Plus. To start, we're gonna be taking the data and importing it to Pause Pack, where we're gonna get our trajectory corrected data. From there, we're gonna import that data into Yellow Scan's cloud station, and that's where we're gonna generate our LiDAR point clouds. As a bonus, at the end of the video, I'm gonna be exporting a DSM file, and I'm gonna be taking that DSM file and importing it into UGCS. From there, I'll be able to fly a terrain following mission using the elevation from the DSM file. So over here on the left is all of the files that I've collected after flying my mission with the Yellow Scan Mapper Plus. Up here I have my images directory, which is where all the images I collected from the camera module will be. Underneath that, I have all of the files that were from the base station, and then below that, I have all of the files from the Mapper Plus. So on the right, I have opened um, Pause Pack version 8.8, .8, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit New Default Project, then I'm gonna take my T04 file, and I'm gonna drag that in. Once this, is gonna, uh, once this is complete, I am then going to take the OBS file from my base station, and then I'm gonna drag that in as well. Let me give that another go. Cool. So now that my base station is in, you'll see in green over here my base station on the bottom. Now what I'm gonna do in pause pack, let me just expand this, is I am now going to right click on my base station. I'm gonna to go to coordinate manager and I am going to select my manufacturer and type. Now, you might not have to do this for your base station, but for my particular base station, I have to set this. So I am going to pick the correct one. I'm gonna hit apply, and I will see that the changes have updated. I see that I have an offset here and everything. If things good, I'm gonna hit close. Next, I'm going to now right click on my base station, and I'm going to hit uh, set base station. So that's gonna run the GNSS QC processor. But after that, what we're gonna to have to do is run the GNSS inertial processor, which is this button up top with the star icon. I'm gonna now click that, and on the right I'll see, because I have a base station set, by default, the GNSS mode is set to infusion single base. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit run. Once this is done running, I will have my trajectory corrected path. Now in green, this is the corrected path or corrected trajectory, and in purple, this is my initial trajectory, which is derived from that T04 file. Now next, what we're gonna to wanna to do is export this file. That way we can import it into CloudStation. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna to go to Tools, Export on the top left, I'm gonna set my format to custom smooth bet. I'm then going to open up my properties. I'm gonna change my height options to orthometric and I'm gonna have WGS84 enabled. Um, I am then going to go to geoid 18 conus for my geoid model. Um, cool, and I'm gonna hit okay. For my mapping frame, I'm just gonna make sure that everything looks good. My datum's good, my mission date is set for my target epoch, that's all good. Then I'm gonna close this. Lastly, I will have to select my export destination. So I will go to desktop, pick my folder, and I'm gonna put it where all my other files are that we started with. So I'm just gonna hit save. After that, now that I've picked the export location, I'm going to actually export the file. Now for colorization, uh, which we're gonna do a little bit later, while we still have pause pack open, let's get that colorization file that we're gonna need set and advanced. So I'm gonna go to um, project, project settings. I am then going to go to camera, lever arms, um, and I am going to hit edit, create photo ID file. From here, I'm gonna browse for my folder and another one that you have to manually pick so I now have to look for where my file was. So this was, uh, let's see, brick training, UGCS, images. So I'm gonna hit my images directory, I'm gonna hit okay. Now, 
you'll notice that over here underneath my um, events, I have one with an NA time. I'm just going to go ahead and exclude this event. And that's just going to be when the scanner fired up. And now I have the proper number of events corresponding to the number of photos that I have. And once I'm done, I am then going to export my photo ID file. Um, I usually just call it timestamp. And I will put that again back where all of my um, files are. So I will have to now yet again search for where I have my stuff. So here. And this time I'm going to save it in the images directory. So save. And now we're done with pause back. So just to confirm, I now have with all of my other folders, I have my export file that I just got from pause pack. And if I go to images, if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I should now have a timestamp file, which is what we're going to need for colorization. So now that we have our files, we can go ahead and start with CloudStation. So with CloudStation opened up, I'm going to create a new project, and I'm going to select the project that I was just working with. From here, it's going to open up our strips, and I am actually going to select the strips. I'm going to edit them, and I am going to drop my strip detection down to 45 meters. This is now going to collect all of the shorter strips that were not being picked up when it was set to 109. Now, what's important here is you'll see that I have PP solution checked. That's our post-process solution. And here, if you do not have that export folder, uh, rather export file automatically detected, you can just click this icon, manually select it yourself, and hit open. Now, with everything looking good, I am then going to hit process. So once this is done processing, we'll then move on to strip detection. And after that, we'll go on to terrain classification and then colorization. With our point cloud now generated, I'm just quickly going to uncheck um, the show trajectories button so that way we can just see our point cloud. So our point cloud is looking pretty good. Uh, but next, I'd like to go ahead and do strip adjustment. So I'm going to run strip adjustment. And then from here, we'll then go on to terrain classification. Now that our strip adjustment is complete, we can move on to terrain classification. This module will allow us to classify points as either ground points or non-ground points. For now, I'm going to leave everything as the default. But if you wanted to change the minimal object height um, as well as your steepness, this would all impact how things, or rather how points are classified. Uh, for now, I'm just going to leave everything as the default. With terrain classification complete, we can now look at the different points that we have on our point cloud. And if I wanted to, I can now go to filters. And I can go to classification. And I can say, disable other, disable, uh, disable unclassified, and show me points that are just ground points. So this can be pretty helpful. Now from here, the last thing that we're going to do before exporting is we're going to go on to colorization. From here, we're going to have to pick our images directory. And once we have that selected, it should automatically also find the images timestamp file that we created in PausePack. Now, if you don't have this file, you'll have to go back, create that file, and manually select it. You will not be able to colorize your point cloud without this file present. So we're going to go ahead, colorize this. And then lastly, I will show you how to export your last file, as well as DHM, DSM, and DTM files. Now that our colorization is complete, the last thing I'd like to go over is exporting our files. On the left, we'll hit export. And then here, you'll have two options. You'll either be able to export point clouds or digital models, or well, rather both. But under point cloud, what you'll be able to do is export LAS or LAS files. And in these files, you'll be able to choose specific coordinates, as well as an output directory and a merging method. You'll also be able to export ground points only if you so desire, and you'll also be able to include or remove certain strips from those files. Under digital model, you'll be able to export DSM files, but if you also did that terrain classification, you'll also be able to export DTM and DHM files. For now, I'm just going to go through the process of exporting a DSM file, and then we'll import it into UGCS 
and I'll show you how that impacts your map overlay and that will allow you to fly with terrain following. Now from here, I have DSM selected and then I'm gonna choose my coordinates, which by default I have it already selected because this is, this is the one that I use the most, uh, WGS84 with UTM Zone 18 North. Next, I have my output folder just set to the folder that we've already been working with, and then I'm gonna leave pixel size and max hole size alone. From here, I'm gonna hit export, and then once that's completed, we'll go into UGCS and I'll show you how to import that. With my export complete, I'm gonna show you now how to import that DSM file into UGCS. From here, I'm gonna hit map options, I'm gonna to go to map layers, I'm gonna to go to elevation, and I'm gonna add a source. From here, I'm gonna upload the DSM file to that source. Give that a second to load. And now I have elevation data at my mission point. So from here now, I will be able to fly a terrain following mission. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. Now, as you see, when it comes to post-processing, things can get a little technical. There's a lot of options to choose from, especially when you're looking at pause pack. Now, depending on your needs or your client's needs, you might need to spend a little bit more time in pause pack and really dial in a lot of settings and potentially even pick different coordinate systems to export your data in. Now, in this video, I kind of just went over like the general workflow for post-processing, and I hope that's enough to get you guys to the next step and give you guys a feel of what to expect when it comes to post-processing your LiDAR data. Now, if you guys have any questions about the Mapper Plus, even CloudStation, UGCS, or PausePack, feel free to reach out to us at 1-800-359-0530 or find us online at terrestrialimaging.com.